friends, and welcome to Star Wars for 100 days. That's right, I'm doing 100 Star Wars videos every day leading up to the release of Star Wars The Force Awakens. Today we're going to discuss one of the most controversial aspects of the original Star Wars trilogy, the cute and fuzzy little Ewoks. I'm gonna be frank. I like the Ewoks. A lot. I honestly think that the unwarranted hate that these cute little fuzzy bear people get is really unwarranted because a lot of the times a lot of hardcore Star Wars fans like to compare the Ewoks to Jar Jar Binks. I really don't think they're on that level whatsoever and honestly before the advent of the internet and the invention of Jar Jar Binks I really don't think that many people had a problem with the Ewoks. They were very popular and enduring characters. They went on to have a spin-off cartoon, they had two TV movies which I highly recommend if you're fans of the Star Wars universe and you just want to see more of that. They're known as Ewoks the Caravan of Courage and Ewoks the Battle for Endor. You can actually find those on DVD and they're honestly really nice kids films. Maybe not so much for the adults, but they're certainly good for the kids at heart. But like I said, I think after Jar Jar Binks and the advent of the internet, I think that's when fans of the Star Wars series started to become more vocal about things they didn't really care for, and a lot of people decided to jump on that bandwagon. Case in point, the Ewoks. They're too kitty. They're too cutesy. But like I said, I really don't think this unwarranted hate really started until the internet finally started to get its legs. Because there was a very loud vocal minority of Star Wars fans who just didn't like these cute little indigenous bear people. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the Ewoks themselves very much clash with the sci-fi storytellings of Star Wars. But honestly, I really do believe that they enrich the universe. They really encapsulate why Star Wars is so amazing. It's a perfect mixture of fantasy and sci-fi and real-world elements. Not only that, but their home world is exactly what I think of when I think of Return of the Jedi. I always picture the planet of Endor, which is a very great juxtaposition to the original two films in the series, where the first one mostly takes place on a desert, and the second one mostly takes place in the sky or on planet Hoth, which is covered in ice. The fact that it's actually set in a forest actually allows a lot of people to sort of become more comfortable with it, and in many senses, that also sort of destroys a little bit of the whimsy. That is until you actually see the Ewoks themselves, which I believe really evoke a lot of personality, in particular the poster child for the Ewoks themselves, Wicket. Wicket is without a doubt, I think, the most adorable Star Wars character in the entire series, and unlike Jar Jar, they made a really smart decision so that the Ewoks would have their very own native language, and because of that, we never actually hear them speak. We never hear them in English or any other human language. And again, that just makes them seem all the more native and all the more alien, which really fits into the world of Star Wars. But the Ewoks in their story is something that I can really get behind. What I really love about it is that they're the ones who are suffering the most from this big war that's going on between the Rebels and, of course, the Empire, because they have no affiliation with either party. They are simply a tribe of people who are caught right in the middle and simply have to pick the lesser of two evils so they can go on and continue to live their lives. And despite the fact that the Ewoks themselves are very cute and fuzzy and incredibly marketable, they happen to be a group of badass warriors. Now, I know saying that an Ewok is a badass out loud might sound a little strange, but just watch that final battle at the end of Return of the Jedi. They completely slaughter the Empire. Not only are they just destroying the Stormtroopers, which honestly isn't that much of a feat, but they're able to destroy their walkers with just their ingenuity and just tying logs together. Not only that, but they team up perfectly with Chewbacca, which leads to a lot of famous scenes, like when they're swinging across the ropes doing those Tarzan yells. And speaking of personality, these guys just reek of it. They all have their own interesting designs and fur patterns and their own little personalities which manage to come out. You have the character of Wicket, who's sort of like the youngest rookie of the group. He's really inquisitive, he's really curious about everything that's going on, and he seems like the biggest adventurer amongst the other Ewoks. You have the leader of the village, who goes by the name of Logray, who also ties everything more into the fantasy aspect of Star Wars. And then, of course, you have the many warriors who appear during the big final battle of Return of the Jedi. Not only that, but Ewoks know how to frickin' party. After destroying the Empire and ripping the heads off of Stormtroopers and literally playing them like drums, what do they do? They end up turning Planet Endor into the biggest rave in the galaxy. The Ewoks themselves also happen to be pretty smart despite the fact that they use very simple tools and especially where they live, but they're able to make use of laser blasters and there's even this one scene where one actually steals one of the speeder bikes and he manages to use it pretty well despite the fact that his little furry feet 
can pretty much barely touch the pedals. Oddly enough, the Ewoks themselves are like the most grounded part of the entire Star Wars universe. Like I said, they're not with the Empire, they're not with the Rebels, they use old school technology if you even want to call it that. They go on fantasy-styled adventures. They almost seem like they're completely out of place and belong in something like, say, Lord of the Rings, but they are actually in the Star Wars universe and they're in the Penu Ultimate Battle of the original trilogy, which is why I love the frickin' Ewoks. Another little fun fact about the Ewoks is that in the original film, Return of the Jedi, no one throughout the entire movie, and I mean no one, even says the word Ewok once. You never hear them say it. This is a testament to the marketing of Star Wars, because they sold action figures and dolls, and they had the Ewoks movies. If it wasn't for those, you'd never know what these guys were called in the first place. You would just assume it's a planet of cute little bear people with spears. So at the end of the day, I think that Ewoks get a lot of unwarranted hate. I think they're really enduring characters and one of my favorite elements from Return of the Jedi, and I will always have fond memories of the little Ewoks and the adventures that they went on. Like I said, if you want to learn a little bit more about Ewoks, you can look this stuff up online, you can see them in the Expanded Universe, and I'd also highly recommend checking out the TV movies, Ewoks The Caravan of Courage and Ewoks The Battle for Endor. Like I've said earlier, they are meant more for a younger audience, but honestly I think adults can get a lot out of them, especially if you're just a big fan of the lore of the Star Wars universe. And what's also interesting about these movies is that they actually take place between episodes 5 and 6, so they're actually smack dab right in the middle of the original Star Wars trilogy. Not only that, but you get to see some other human characters who exist in the universe in those movies, as well as some other characters who end up appearing and have affiliations with those in the Star Wars The Clone Wars series. So honestly, it's really worth checking out. And if you're just feeling like having a good stupid time, watch the Ewoks cartoon. Again, that is definitely meant for children, but I watched it all the time as a kid as reruns were on Sci-Fi Channel all the freaking time. And anything that involves Star Wars, I was just gonna eat it right up. But the little Ewoks, I love those guys. So there it is, guys. That's my thoughts about the Ewoks. But I want to hear from you guys. Are you fans of these fuzzy little bear people? Are you annoyed by them and their ridiculous quirkiness? Do you have any favorite scenes from the original Star Wars trilogy or the prequel movies? And what do you hope to see from the rest of Star Wars The Force Awakens? Please tell me in the comment section below. Also, before you guys leave today, make sure to subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media, and make sure to check out our weekly podcast show. You can watch that on our YouTube channel, or you can download the show for free at iTunes and at RogueIntel.com. I'd highly recommend checking out this week's episode. There will be a link for it at the very end of this video. We just got back from DragonCon 2015, and we did a few interviews. And the interview that we have in this week's episode is with a voice actor by the name of Carrie Means, who is the voice of Frylock from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. So make sure to check that out. It's a lot of fun. The guy is absolutely hilarious. So thank you guys again for watching, and as always, you up now, bitches?